Something amazing has just happened. The sun has just come out in England. Well, obviously I can't do a video inside when the sun comes out once or twice a year in this uh, country of mine. So what I'm going to do is hopefully commentate on a game from the bottom of my garden and hopefully the sound quality is okay. So please stay with me and if you're lucky later on I might show you some of my flowers. <laughs> yeah, so you can't get more excited than that. Okay, so I have just got a game here and it's 30 minutes on the clock each and we have two 2,200 rated players according to the Leiches classical setup and we have got a Sicilian on the board, E4, C5. Fantastic stuff. So what I do in this case with White is I, I decline the Sicilian with ridiculous, ludicrous Bishop D3 and it works for me, but we're going to see hopefully White play some sort of more, something more aggressive, I don't know. Uh, oh, this is the Alapin, I believe. C3, so it's anti Sicilia. Knight F6. I'm going to look at the ratings of these players. E5 straight away on the board. Uh, let's just have a look at this. There's lots of frantic movement before you. Leave. This is so quick. Slow down, guys. <laughs> right. Knight F3. D6. Uh, I don't know what's going on. This is so quick. And Bishop C4. So this will be theory. I'll look back on this uh, shortly when things settle down a little bit. You know, Knight uh, B6 hitting the Bishop. Bishop B3. And I have no idea what's going on in this opening at all. I don't mind admitting that because I don't study openings that much. But I know this is the Alp in Sicilian and that's about it. This is why I do these videos. I start to like, learn from other people and things like that. It's a useful learning experience. The sun has just gone in. That's really disappointing. You know, okay, so when the game slows down a bit, I will start to go back over the opening there and sort of work out what the hell went on. But I expect White here just to take on D4. I don't know. I've not e even had time to really look and analyze the position, but that, that, that seems like the natural thing. But it's Black's move. So Black's got to do something. So Black taking on C3. Knight takes three, C3. Uh, feels a bit too gambity and you know also taking on e5 you have no idea what's going on this opening <laughs> so it'd be interesting to look if i was black here i would be concerned about taking one of the pawns just from general sort of development issues and you know something like taking the pawn here uh bringing the knight out it just feels a little bit like you're inviting a white attack. So from my point of view, do, do something non-committal. I don't know. I don't know the theory at all, but something like this or something like this. I wouldn't be taking the pawn, but no doubt it's absolutely fine to do that if you know what you're doing. Uh, so let me flip back and look actually at this opening because that came on really quickly when I was trying to sort of introduce the video. So E4, C5, and I will put the book on if I can do that. Where do I do that? Oh my god, it might even rain in a minute. That, that's just insane. Well, it's not insane, it's just kind of normal. Uh, so, analysis function. Where the hell is the book? Little cog thing. Uh, keep with me, don't run away. I will find the little book thing. Oh, here we are. Um, yes, it is the Alapin setup. And E5 is a common idea. Knight d5, d4, this is all uh, theory, c takes, and bringing the knight out to f3 is played, but it's not the most common move, c takes d4 is the most common move, after that e6 was played, which is, yeah, still up there, and then bishop c4, this is a natural move, uh, knight coming to b6, kicking the bishop, and then the most common move here is knight c6, yeah, it makes sense, just ignoring this and just developing. Uh, D takes on E5. Good stats for white because, you, you know, he's sort of inviting an attack on, I suppose. E6. Did I say E6? I don't know. Yeah, I think so. D5. Yeah, D5 also makes sense. D takes C3, bit dodgy. Bishop G4, also dodgy. So, don't like. I don't like this setup because I don't know what I'm doing in it. I'm still looking in the database, still trying to work out what the hell is going on. But... Uh, it seems that this is really good for white, which does make sense because, you know, this Alapin variation, smith Morrow decline type of thing, uh, is obviously not on the radar. But if black knows what they're doing, oh, the sun's come out. 
Nice. If Black knows what they're doing, then obviously that's fine. But the pause here suggests Black doesn't really know what they're doing because they would just make the move. Right, so if Black... Actually, Black's best move according to the database is d5, which sort of makes sense as well. Just dropping this bishop out of out of this sort of game a little bit and you know always playing d5 is always a sensible move and you could maybe develop the bishop get do this sort of thing and just develop as normal taking you know didn't feel right to me and that does invite sort of a 60 percent win rate for white yeah definitely not something you want to do um bishop g4 72 percent win rate for uh, for, for, for white here because we have attacked it, do we not? Ah, yes, makes sense. Yeah, of course, we have this natural tactic. And this is the problem, you see. I, I'm familiar with tactics and these sorts of tactics, but when you, you if you go into an unfamiliar opening, and then, you know, you can sort of, oh, the sun has come out again, sorry about that. Uh, you can actually see that these tactics from an unfamiliar opening are not as familiar. So this is why you need to study your tactical patterns from different points of view. Anyway, have we got a mood on the board yet? I don't think so. We're still in this position. Can't even see the database. The sun is shining so strongly. That's what English summer is like, guys. You know, people criticize English summer and they say four weeks of non-solid rain and I can't even see the database because of the sunshine. There you go. Come to England. Don't go to Spain or Greece or, or Italy or anything. I come to England. Enjoy enjoy the English summer. Uh, I can't see the database, so I'm going to switch off the database because I can't see it. And I've talked about the database anyway. So uh, hopefully there's still some viewers watching this. And yeah, I will show you my flowers later on, so keep watching for that. And what is Black going to do? Let's look at the timings. Apologies for all these hands. I really cannot see. Never done this before, as you can see. Right, all set. Click on that. How do I get back to the game? If I, if I click off this arrow, will it completely? It might do. Let's go to the cog. Bear with me, guys. Bear with me. Don't run away. Don't run away. All right, I'm going to back to the game. Okay, there's an arrow <laughs> pointing to the left in blue saying back to the game. So that's what I need to press. Click on that. And white is still... Oh, no, we've had some moves. We've had some moves. You just don't get this with the professional chess players. Here. Right, so black has played... Let's go back. Let's go back. Kick Bishop back. Black has played this developing move, which seems to me fairly sensible. And White has taken the pawn on d6. And we have got e6. So this, to me, seems fine. Uh, you know, not sort of taking and grabbing material. Developing pawns. Sorry, developing pieces instead of taking pawns. And we have castles. Bishop takes. This, I think, is fine for Black uh, without looking at the database or anything like that. You just continue with development. And it's White's move at this point. So we have... Actually, Black has burned six minutes on the clock, which is actually quite a lot, you know, from the opening. But you're better off, you know, making sensible moves and losing a bit of time rather than making a rash move and, and sort of losing on with, with lots of time left. It's white to play, and we are on move 10 now. And what's white going to do? So... Castled. White wants to just continue development, in my opinion. I don't think the black opening has been successful, just looking at this, because, you know, this bishop's a bit ugly. And, you know, we're not castled yet. And the knights are out. But it's not horrific, something that's absolutely fine. Uh, will we have an exchange of material? Queen coming to the board. Maybe castles, something like that. Uh, possibly. And then things are possibly quite equal. Although this bishop is looking a bit of a problem at the moment. But that, maybe that's a sort of long term thing. You know, um, nothing massively to sort of, you know, declare on that front. I mean, this is a Sicilian game that's sort of dried up, I think, a little bit because you've not got the sort of aggressive two sides attacking sort of position. But that's what White's trying to do in this position is, is like nullify Black's attack and sort of, you know, you know, Black wants to play this way. White's saying, no, we're going to do something different. We're going to play this. 
you know, so Black has to use time on the clock and things like that. So this is taking a bit of time, and you use sort of, and there's no increment in this game as well, is that right? 30 plus zero, no increment, and looking at the guy's stats, they seem to slowly play. Ah, actually, White does not play Blitz or Bullet, so who knows what the stats are there. In terms of the rating, they played 44 games, so White's not played that many games, so we don't know the true rating of White. Black, on the other hand, has got, let me look, lots of one off 1,400 Bullet games at 1,900 plus, and... Similar sort of thing, slightly less on blitz. So, so black is probably the more sort of established in terms of the data that we know. So white has taken with the pawn uh, in this situation. So what we could do here is, what's black going to do? Castle, yeah, natural, just to castle in this position. Um, what do we prefer? I still prefer white in this position just because of this bishop. And why it's just much sort of freer to develop, in my humble amateur opinion. So, there you go. So, oh, oh, by the way, I hope you like the ball of heart. You know, this is not just a prop. I do wear the ball of heart quite often. In fact, most days I wear a ball of heart. Anyway, uh, knight c3 on the board, you know, natural developing move. So what we've got in terms of the structure. Let's look at the pawn structure actually here because this is also interesting. And we've got an isolated queen pawn, common theme, and black has got a sort of four versus three on this side. And you know, you've got two versus two. So the theme, the theme of this sort of middle game position should be this, you know, isolated queen sort of pawn sort of setup. Uh, and also maybe looking what to do about this bishop, because these two bishops are better. So white's better here, from my point of view, because it's just easier to play. And, you know, white can possibly always liquidate this pawn if they want to at some point. Uh, if they want to get rid of this isolated, isolated pawn, it's not always a weakness. Uh, the idea with an isolated queen pawn is that you can sort of, you know, Bring up pieces behind it and attack in this sort of front, and you've got bishops, and this bishop and the queen can go somewhere, and the, the knights can go somewhere. But black's fairly solid, but this is a bit passive. I really don't like this bishop at this point because what you could do with this is develop it here, but then you've got to move the knight, and then you've got to move this, and then you've got to move the bishop, and then you've got to be the so you could do that. And that's what I've been thinking about with black at this point of view what to do with this bishop, and also. You're a little bit undefended on this side in case there's going to be some sort of attack. Not immediately, but there's some sort of build up on the king side. Anyway, black has gone knight b4 in this position. So knight b4, immediately, I'm not exactly 100% sure what knight b4 achieves, but black's played it anyway. So knight b4, <laughs> bishop uh, g5, hitting the queen. Trade of bishops will be fine for black, I think, here, actually because black's the one that's a little bit cramped, so trading piece, pieces would make sense in this position. So white here, probably I would drop the bishop back and not go into that, which favours black. If it's going to favour black to trade, then don't trade. So you could say that bishop g5 is a bit of a mistake because, because of the move of bishop e7 in, in response, I don't know. You know, this is all about looking about amateur mistakes and amateur sort of slow, slow sort of moves that you know, amateur players make and things like that. Which is, I think, better than just looking at top grandmaster games on the whole, because you're learning about the mistakes and the sort of games that you and I sort of make, and you know, sort of mistakes we make and sort of positions we end up in. And okay, so hitting the knight. All right, so you could kick the knight, you could take the bishop, you could drop the knight back, or you could take the bishop. So now what I would do with black is I spend a little bit of time thinking about this. Don't make a rash move because you've got, you know, things to consider. Whether to move this knight, whether to trade this bishop. And I can't see the screen because the sun has just come out again. Uh, okay, hopefully, hopefully I can see it just about. Yeah, yeah. So what would I do with black in this position? Uh, I would potentially keep this knight on the board because I really like my knights. So 
the first thought in my head is to drop this knight here. Right, and it, if it trades, you put another knight on this square, and at the same time, you're hitting this bishop. So, you know, it does also make sense to take here. And then white can take here and mess up the structure. So this is, you know, something you've got to stop and think about. So black is doing that. Black's a 2,200 rated player, according to live chess anyway. So I don't know what that makes in terms of video or English rating or anything like that. But you have to stop and think about this position. A strong player here, you know, Grandmaster would just make this move instantly because they've seen these sort of positions and patterns before. Whereas, you know, the weaker players, like us, the amateur players, get into these positions. And we have to stop and think and calculate you know, and, and that's why what makes a stronger player from a weaker player is that you've seen the positions before, you don't have to calculate. So a top GM would just make a move here, an IM player would just make a move, but here we have to sort of think about it and weigh up with options. Uh, so let's let's have a look at that then. So what would you do in this position? Would you drop the knight back? Or would you take the bishop or do something else? My instinctive move is just to drop the knight here. And then we're still on the bishop. We're still asking a question to this bishop. Don't know if that's the right thing. That's just, I've not even calculated it. So don't want to calculate. I don't really want to do that. Uh, so that's just my move. Anyway, this has been interesting. And while we're waiting for this move, do you want to look at some of my flowers that I've got? I've got this massive spread of orange thing in my garden that just takes over. So what I'll do while we're making this move is just show you these orange flowers. I've no idea what they're called. If anybody knows what they're called, let me know. Because I'm not really a gardener. I spent six hours doing the privet and chopping the grass yesterday because I've been on holiday for like uh, forever. And I've come back and it's just like 10 minute a forest. So have a look at these flowers anyway. Uh, just let me bring the camera up so I can see what I show you. All right, so these are the flowers. They're really nice. Can you see them? I don't know if you can see that really well. Yeah, there's loads of them. Uh, loads of them and they're orange things and they flare up all the time this time of uh, the year in August and they're really really nice really like them but they do take over but I don't want to chop them back because that's it's a bit of colour in the garden oh we've got to move he's dropped the night back where I would have dropped the night back whoops microphones fell off the table there we go Thanks for watching, by the way. If you're still watching with me, thank you. <laughs> because this is just like something I enjoy doing. So, you know, I thought I'd just record it as well and put that on there. So I don't expect to get many views and things like that. I'm not doing it for anything like that. I'm just doing it because I enjoy doing it. And, you know, if you want to subscribe and all that, that'd be great. I won't do too many of these because, you know, they're probably pretty terrible. But <laughs> I do enjoy doing them. So we'll do probably one a week. Maybe not from the garden again. But I will show you the, the, the grass I cut yesterday because I'm really proud of the grass I cut. You know, six hours doing the bloody grass and the privet. Anyway, sorry about that. You can always skip forward a minute if you don't want to hear about my garden. But, you know, do persevere because, you know, an Englishman's garden is is uh, right, right and li livelihood. Anyway, so the night has dropped back. Let me go to the other screen and then I can fiddle around with the actual thing. There we go, there we go, that's the button. So yeah, the knight drops back, I think that's best. I think, yeah, exactly, the knight drops back, challenges the bishop, bishop drops back. So this immediate bishop g5, it's not a blunder, it might not even be an accuracy, but just right moves by black, sort of push it away, and that's fine, because sometimes, you know, you can make these moves and black can do something wrong, and, you know, from my point of view, it's not the end of the world, you know, no things have been missing, but... It's actually improved black's position, in my opinion. So bishop g5 doesn't really do anything for white. We drop the bishop into e7. And there's a challenge, drop the knight into a good square, and then the bishop drops back. So black's position is better because of bishop g5. But this is not going to lose this chess game. Right, I can tell you now, that little minor inaccuracy, it might not even be inaccuracy, but the slight difference in move is not going to lose this chess game. No chance. You know, if you were Magnus Carlsen, if you were a Grandmaster or somebody at 2,300, 400, that might lose you your chess game. This is not lose this chess game. Anyway, uh, we have Bishop D2 on the board and then 9 F6. I'm going to adjust the screen again because I can't see myself. So, yeah. Okay, that's all right. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, so I'm somewhere in the middle. Okay, yeah, that's good. All right, let's get back to the game. More on the chess, less of the garden and my yeah, sort of condition. So knight f6, ah, so yeah, I mean knight f6, 
does add a sort of defender around the king side. Well, not defending this square, you know, this sort of thing. I always feel comfortable with an eye on f6 because, you know, it does so much. And, you know, in, in terms of defense. Uh, but was it, was it Black's best move? I don't know. It's still this bishop's really annoying me, you know. But this is awkward. I mean, this is uh, this has got to be equal. I mean, slightly better for white because of this bishop, in my point of view. But this bishop now is just hitting granite. This bishop's developed. The rook coming to e1, natural developing move. What are you going to do with, with the bishop? Are you going to do something like this? Oh, it's weird. You know, because the problem with the bishop is also you can't develop the rook and you get sort of a traffic jam situation in most cases. So minor little things so far, but this is what amateur games, maybe this night actually, could come here and then you could start thinking about things like this. I would play this move. Knight on b6 to d5. I think I would do that without calculating. I'm not calculating anything. I've literally not calculated one move watching this video because I'm just looking at, you know, piece, piece placement and sort of structural things and things like that. Uh, uh, because, you know, why not? Uh, so that's what I'd play, I think. Let's have a look at other candidate moves. What would you play? Because this does, to, does, does, does not look right. But, but this, 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 and this looks good. And you're getting the rook on this file, bishop on this diagonal, and the knight on a decent square. And you obviously got to obviously got to consider what white's going to do. But if we take, we just replace it with another knight. And you know, training pieces is going to be fine for for black as well. You know, in the end game, you can gang up on this pawn. So white don't really want to trade lots and lots of pieces off. Some black is just going to bang up against the d4 pawn, win the pawn, or sort of freeze white's position, which is this sort of standard sort of uh, tactics uh, in this sort of types of position. Uh, okay, so we've gone bishop d7. Fine. Okay, it'd be interesting to see later on, uh, you know, what the computer thinks of this setup, which was the secondary idea. That, I do still prefer this move. Can't see the, the the screen again because of the sun. I do need to think about doing this in the future. I hope this laptop is not going to get too hot and sort of like melt because it's not even my laptop. It's a works laptop, you know. Don't tell work I've been using this for chess purposes. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, what's what you're going to do? This is very sort of slow build up of of sort of pieces, and there's nothing sort of dramatic happening yet. But this often happens you know, in many games, and then you'll get one mistake or a blunder and bang, the game's over. So it'll be interesting to see how this game develops and what White does. You know, you can just, if you ain't got to move, if you can't think of a general strategy, then just develop pieces that are not developed. Right, so, so White could simply play Rook C1 immediately because it's just putting the Rook on a natural square along this diagonal. Right, I'm not saying that's the best move. I'm saying that, you know, if you're low on the clock, which white's actually not, the natural developing moves are, you know, pretty useful. Does that anyway, yeah. So it does make sense. Uh, and then, so he has got this idea to get rid of this bishop this way. Now, we're not going to take here because we're just going to lose the bishop and develop the queen. But bishop's on decent square. But it just feels a bit weird in front. It should be all right. I'm just worried about future things like this, kicking the bishop away. I would have preferred this myself. But, you know, this could be a good move. This could be better than my plan. And I could learn something by looking at these players that are probably slightly above me or about the same length, length, same strength as me. That's the point of watching, you know, rated players that are slightly above you or around about the same level as you pick up these little nuances that you wouldn't probably get in top grandmaster games, especially at bullet control and, and blitz speed. Because they're too fast, too quick, and they're too good for the for, for average players. That is why I'm doing this series. Uh, and I enjoy it as well. Okay, so bishop drops back because obviously that hits the bishop. So maintain the bishop. And we've got no I like black structure. Black's pretty so everything's pretty solid actually everything's you know there's nothing much going on here but 
Um, we got moved from white there. Missed it because of the sun. Uh, B6. Okay. All right. So black's going to drop the bishop back to B7. It's just done it this way instead. So it's the same idea, but, you know, just a sort of reverse idea. Uh, that's pretty cool, actually. That's good. Nice. And what this pawn does, obviously, it covers this square, so the knight's never going to drop in here. It probably couldn't do that anyway. So, yeah, I don't, I like, I like black now, actually. But there's nothing much in this at all at the moment. And it'd be interesting to see how these players sort of progress when the speed sort of picks up, because we've got, you know, eight, 15 minutes for black, 80 minutes for white, and there's no increment. So at some point, this is going to turn into a blitz game, right? And this is then going to turn into a bullet game. So when people say, I oh, don't, don't study blitz, don't study bullet, you know, it affects your eight games at, uh, you know, longer controls because eventually the longer standard controls become rapid and then sort of blitz. Anyway, what would you play in this position? I'm just going to look now. The sun is getting even warmer. If I wasn't filming this, I would take my t-shirt off by now, but that's definitely not gentleman. Line. Don't worry, I'm not going to do that in this video. Uh, okay, so plans for why. I mean, we've made the sort of sensible moves uh, in the position, and now you're thinking about this is where your strategy comes into it, because there's no major tactics happening at the moment, I don't think. Uh, nothing, I mean, you have to look at all the, the captures, but there's nothing really going. You can't take back with this because this would hang actually. So, so knight takes, and then you know, yeah, the queen takes, or bishop takes, rook takes. But we're going to have this rook coming to c8 at some point very quickly. It, it, generally, you know, you're not going to see a, a capture. You have to look at all the captures in the position, right? So if you're white now. And the first thing you should do, if you're, especially if you're sort of beginner players, look at all the captures and 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 the sort of checks. But yeah, as a sort of season player, you, this is not really going to work. Anyway, so white drops the knight into a decent square, e5. That's the sort of thing. Bloody flies. Cannot stand flies. They have a thing for me, flies. They come around me constantly. Uh, I think they're just attracted to me. I don't know if it's sort of got sort of like nice Mediterranean skin or anything like that. I don't know. But really annoying. Anyway, knight e5. Uh, is a sensible move, and what what you can get with this in this sort of position? Oh wow, we have another move quickly already. All right, so let, let's talk. So bishop b seven naturally, and then the queen comes to f three. So knight on e five is very strong. I would want him to get rid of this knight at some point. So you can do that by dropping this back to d seven, you know, and trying to force a trade of these pieces uh also play f6 don't want to play f6 uh if the knight moves obviously you can't play f6 and hit your own knight i'm talking about if the knight moves and there's some other one move but queen f3 mm. queen f3 and then looking at this is mm, not immediate tactic because we take queen takes but i'm wondering I would not rush into play a move like Queen F3 because you have to look at all the sort of situations when you have this sort of hit in the Queen. Obviously, in the knight moves, the bishop is unprotected. So if the knight takes here, then we have Queen takes. But tactically, it's just a bit dangerous usually doing this. I'm sure why it's considered uh, the situation. So in this position, what you don't want to do is black. It's got, oh, yeah, especially if you, I'm talking about if you're a sort of lower rate player below 1,200, you think, oh, th there's a potential tactic here. Let's protect this bishop by putting the rook here, right? Because what you're doing is, yeah, you could set this up. Sorry. This idea. But white's going to see that if they're on the sort of same written level. And the rook here does not want to come to be a... God damn flies. So you don't want to play sort of moves that makes your position inferior. Just to try and fish for tactics. Fish for tactics if you're making moves that are natural and that, that, that work. Anyway, we have a move. Rook B8. Wow, he has played Rook B8. Uh, so he's gone for that sort of idea of playing this tactic here. I don't think that's a good move because why it's just going to move the queen 
Right, and this rook's stuck on b8, which is crap. It's not the end of the world. Queen can just move, and then rook can move. So, so black's sort of fishing for this tactic here. What black's trying to do is say, hey, I'm going to take this knight. Or, I mean, queen could take the knight, but, you know, whatever. The knight can move at some point, and, and this is going to hit this point. Yeah, but... Does the rook want to be in b8? No. So you're fishing for some sort of positional tactic that's not really going to be useful to the position. But, you know, so there's actually no real threat here. So that's it's not a good move. This is a sort of move that is understandable, but I don't think it is useful because this is not even a threat because queen takes. And then this is... But it's not the end of the world. It's one of those little... Minor sort of inaccuracy moves that it's not going to lose you the chess game. All right? This chess game's not, not going to be lost because of this move or because of the initial bishop g5. But what it does allow is this knight to move freely in some sort of desperado situation, but it's not there at the moment. All right? This queen can take. So queen moves away from that even though it's not a threat, but... Kind of makes sense. Now this rook is just... This is my point, is it? My rook is just stuck on b8. Right, which is not useful. So does the rook need to move again and waste the tempo? I don't know. Uh, so, prefer white here. Bishop can relocate to c2. We've got... Attacks, pieces coming in, rook lifts, queen here. So I do prefer white in this position. This is not really doing anything now. But even so, it's still fairly equal. Tactically, if you're looking from a tactical point of view and you're looking at other captures, there's only one. So it's more of a strategic sort of situation at the moment, generally speaking. And you want to really get rid of this knight. If, if you black this is not great yeah bringing the bishop here makes sense this makes sense in terms of keeping the knight away i suppose but this knight's strong got to do something about this long term this bishop's good this rook's not good this rook's not moved the queen's not really you know doing much anyway so why it's still definitely better obviously we're threatening uh potential tactics although the knight is on f6 so there's nothing yet but just moving the pieces towards the king side. Right. For example, bringing the bishop here, taking, is threatening, sort of checkmate type of thing. So white's, white's got more of a, let's move the pieces towards it, pointing at the king side. We're black here, sure. Still, still absolutely fine. But a little bit cramped. This bishop's not great. And obviously they wrote, as I said previously, do you want to look at my grass? Of course you do. All right, it's really proud of my grass. I'll just show my grass in a second. Right. I don't know if you see that very well. Isn't that really good? Like, magnificent. I don't know if you could see it properly, but that took a lot of work after sort of 17 days in Spain. It was, you know, six hours piece of nightmare. Anyway, enough of my grass, and let's look at what black's going to do in this position. A little bit cramped, white's still better. Uh, oh, you can see my hydrangeas now. They need watering. I've not watered those for a long time. So I need to water those, though the rain has sort of seen to the watering issues. Anyway. Back to the game. 11 minutes, 10 minutes now, plus for black, 14 minutes for white. So white has got a four minute advantage with no increment. All right, and white, is the white the one who plays Blitz and Bullet? Maybe not a line, but maybe they're doing real life. Black, oh, black is from Greece. Greece is really warm. Don't know where they're from. Okay, so let's look. Rook c8, yes, yeah, so this is the point, you see, bringing the rook to b8 and then I have to move it to c8 is just a kind of a bit of a waste of move, so slight inaccuracy, where the tactic wasn't really on at the moment. I mean, it could have been a potential tactic later on, 
But you're like making an inferior move again to have to bring it to a decent square. I don't mind fishing for tactics when the move made doesn't harm your position. I'm all for that. That's why I play the D3 Roy, where I do a lot of fishing on the king side, a lot of slow build up and gradual build up. And this is not the same thing. So anyway, knight coming to g4, challenging the knight in f6. The bishops aiming towards the king side. Rook already prefer, pre prepared to do a rook lift at some point. Uh, oh. <laughs> we could if rooks could do that. But I still think black's absolutely fine. Obviously, there's still things you can do. So there's no immediate attack, I don't think. Look in this position. But who are you going to take from this position? You know, probably, probably white. And I've not really analysed anything. I'm just looking at it from, you know, a structural point of view, really. Right. I mean, in this position, just to point out that if ever white, black takes the knight, then we can drag a pawn into this position. And we, we can sort of protect this isolated pawn. So it's not something white, black wants to do. So, okay, g6. Knight comes back to e5. Uh, yeah, it's just... G6 is fine, blocks out this bishop. There's probably no sort of attacks against uh, this square anymore. But what we're going to do about this, bring the rook in. You could bring the bishop into this square. So you could look at something like this as well. Got to do something about this knight because it drops into this really good square and it's annoying if you are the uh, black player. You know, blacks with the bishop on b7, you can always be looking at these sorts of tactic takes. Bishop comes, threatening checkmate on this square, and then maybe doing something else. So, these sort of tactics where you have a sort of a battery, you know, they're in the position already. I mean, there's no tactic there at the moment, but four or five, six, seven moves in the future, there might be. So, the tactic is actually there, inherent in the position. So, what if you, you know, it's something to consider, even though. It's not there at the minute. But having said that, how does the, how does the game progress? Again, you know, this is going to go down to a mistake in Blitz. I think we have five minutes difference now. And I don't think a player has made a mistake or, or a blunder. None that I've seen. Or I've been talking about my garden and my grass. But the game will come down to Blitz controls. You mark my words. Keep watching. And someone will make a general blunder. You know, and this is my point regarding Blitz Chess. I'm going to do another video on that actually later on. And this video's taking a while, you know, because the game's taking a while and I can't really see. But it's good fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's watching chess in the garden and challenging the knight finally. Yeah, knight, knight coming to d7, challenging the knight on e5. I think that's something black had to do at some point. And then... Black can also, at some point, bring the bishop to g7 to cover these dark squares. Uh, it's a good place for the bishop. Uh, it nullifies white's attack. This game is going to be decided by a blunder, I can tell. I can just feel it because you know, it's a slow, steady build-up, sensible moves, and then someone's going to hang a piece in blitz controls. That's what normally happens. So what does white do in this position? Drop the knight back. Takes. F4, lots of choice here. I mean, F4 is interesting. F4 takes and takes. I don't know. I don't know. This is, this is one of those types of positions that it's just a bit annoying because it's not sort of concrete, different times. Okay, so Knight takes it. Lots of different moves. Oh, apologies. Like, quick race through the game. And we have the game position here. It's takes, Bishop takes. Okay, so this doesn't strike me as... Giving up the bishop doesn't strike me as the greatest move. Giving up, sorry. 
the night doesn't strike me as a great move because I don't know, this is just isolated now. Just think this is another inaccuracy, and I don't know why. I can't sort of light verbalize it. I just think that's possibly not the best move. It's not horrific. You're not losing a chess game because of it. Something strikes me that that is slightly off. I don't know whether it gives control of the black. We drop the bishop back. We've got more pressure on this d square. I don't know. I think players sort of like know instinctively where and when something's not quite right. That doesn't feel quite right to me. I think it's because I like my knights as well, but maybe isolates the deep pawn a little bit and gives control. That's why. If it was tried to verbalize that, I don't know. But anyway, what should we do here? Yeah, I like just sort of bringing the bishop to f6. Like black is low on time. It's white to move, but black is on 6 minutes 42. White is on 11 minutes 41. So black's in a lot of trouble in terms of time controls yeah, because there were no increment in this game at all. Guy is cutting his privet three doors down. It's really annoying. Hope you can't hear that. You should be able to, so the, the mic should block that out. But apologies if you can't hear any, you know, uh, chainsaws. Chainsaws are annoying. Anyway, bishop f6 will be my move. But it's white to play, obviously, in this position. And what you don't want to do is make really quick moves to try to sort of push black against time and make something inferior. So just make, making steady moves is fine. Uh, do you think... Ah, oh, the chainsaw's gone. Do you think about F4? A little bit committal, I don't know. So stronger players would be watching this and go, ah, this is the move. But, you know, this is the point of this video is to sort of go over these everyday moves that are not really mentioned quite a lot. You know, tactics are mentioned a lot, strategies mentioned a lot, end games, brilliant queen sacrifices, little subtle moves that don't really fit into these categories. I think this is what this sort of video is so hope, hopefully sort of trying to, trying to look at, really. So what would you play your F4? Mm, committal pull move, don't know. Just shuffle something around, make a non-committal move and just put the, the time back onto black. It is Black's move. Have I missed a move? Oh, yeah, okay. I've missed a couple of moves. Sorry. It's a lot of moves. How did I miss all these moves? And there we are. That's the game situation. Uh, and now we're moving a lot quicker. Now we're moving into, oh, black is in a, in a sort of blitz situation. And we might move towards an end game position. Uh, white had to obviously stop this pawn being uh, taken. And we've got the exchange, exchange of queens, going into an end game. Makes sense for black because they've got half the amount of time of white. So let's move the rook to one of these two squares, trying to control this square. And this is fairly even now, definitely very, very even. But what does white do? Does white drop back and defend the second rank? Or try to play actively? I mean, the threat is checkmate, so we have to deal with that. But now we do. Okay. Drop here. Yeah. Comes back. Now we're on a pure end game situation now. Because these pieces may get exchanged pretty soon. The rooks may get exchanged. I would not, you might even have a draw in this situation at some point. Black's better, and I'm not sure that move before. Because now you've got to go passive. Now this, this is the move. I thought why well, I had to go passive, but obviously you can just drop it into e3.
All right, and now we've got a not so good structure, but now we've got a blitz game. And you know, all the people don't play a blitz. You know, you, your standard game is suddenly a blitz game. So if you don't practice blitz, you're playing a blitz game now and you're not practicing that sort of skill. So uh, I prefer black. This is just a king and pawn. And someone's going to make a blunder in this end game and move the king to a wrong square because time is not racing away from white's point of view. We've got a draw. We're just drawn by mutual agreement. Wow. Okay. Interesting. So we've got a draw. And it's obviously a drawn structure. The structure's drawn. But top players would not accept to join this position. Not, no, you know, apologies to, to the players. They're probably a bit stronger than me or about equal. But you've got equal structure. So I can understand the draw in the position. But it, from my point of view, when I used to be playing at games, I would take draws like this in the club because I'm thinking, you know, I'm black. I've got five minutes. My opponent's got nine minutes. There's no increment. Offers me a draw, look around, someone else has got, you know, a win or something like that. I take the draw. But I think I think players should play on. I think if this game would have played on, I think Black's probably maybe slightly better. I don't know. Let's have a look at the uh analysis very, very briefly. I'm not interested in the opening because I'm I'm never interested in the opening. But uh, I'll quickly flick through the situation. Let's have a look. So we had this Alepin set up. You can, you know, you can slow the video down if you want to look at the database for the opening, but I'm going to flip through the opening. This is not something that's going to come up that much. Therefore, probably not of massive amount of interest. I think what's more of interest is the sort of middle game stuff and the maneuvering moves. So was this not a great move? Uh Rookie one, bishop g5, bishop g5, bishop g5, computer said that's fine. This is why I don't understand because after bishop e7, computer says it's slightly better to go into this for white. I suppose it makes sense. Not much in it. It's minor, minor details on where, where chess games are not won or lost either way. Mm, yeah, this didn't make much sense. The knight comes back. Bishop drops back. So this is bang equal. And of six. Both players have played this really well, you know, made no sort of mistakes that I can see. Minor inaccuracies here and there. Bishop D2, minor inaccuracy, really. So the players have uh, requested a computer analysis. So I'm not going to look at minor inaccuracies. It's not the point of, of this sort of series. It's looking at sort of major things. Yeah, this is fine. Another way to set up the bishop on b7's fine. B8. Uh, computer third choice. Yeah, it's gone now. Uh, rook c8 is the computer choice, very slightly, because obviously it's just a natural move. This move, but yeah, it's not. You're not losing chess games because of that. You will do on a super high level, but not, not at this level. Yeah, this this game has sort of tottered around to a draw. I thought there would be a massive blunder at some point in Blitz Time Control, but an exchange of pieces to an equal structure led to a sort of draw by mutual agreement. And this is all fine. And this is when we had a lot of exchange of material. And just a draw agreement. Slightly better for the black, but there's hardly anything in it, obviously. Yeah, so the computer does have this is absolutely bang drawn naturally because the structure is exactly the same and the rooks are the kings are in the game. But you know, just because Stockfish has this as drawn with five minutes on the clock, ten minutes on the clock, if you had sort of a ten minute, five minute four minute advantage you might want to play in this position because your opponent could make a blunder you know take advantage of that and you can beat them on time right okay if you don't like winning on time then you know play with increment so you know in, in the club games i was always like i don't like to win on time it's like not gentleman something like that you know we, we can dot dos us uh, sort of let's top hats together but in that case play with increment but anyway 
a good game for both players. No mistakes, no blunders, right? So that is a good solid game, a good solid chess game, right? If you could play games like this, there's nothing flair, there's nothing happening, there's no massive sacrifices, you're developing pieces sensibly, making a few minor inaccuracies, nothing major, you're not blundering, you know, and then you are going to go up the, the tactics rating ladder because, uh, and the, the, the player rating ladder really, not just the tactics rating ladder, because you're not making mistakes, right? If one of these players dropped hung, hung a piece, the other, the other would have won the game. And that's the difference between players at sort of that's the higher levels, they're just not dropping material. Anyway, I think my battery's about to go, which is a good time for me to go. So thanks for watching this. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you enjoyed my garden and my, my orange flowers and my grass. You couldn't quite see the grass, but I'm very proud of the grass. Anyway, goodbye. Thanks for watching. Take care.